Organ donations usually mean the difference between life and death for a patient who is in dire need. However, few of us know the sheer importance of tissue donations for burn victims around the world and specifically in the country. Sandra Fenter from the Center for Tissue Engineering joins us to talk about the need for tissue donations. These donations are used to help burn victims receive life-changing treatments and how you can get involved. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Felisa. It it's so yeah. lovely to spread the knowledge and get people equipped with the tools to help out. Now, yeah. as we said earlier with Sam, a lot of people are quite familiar with organ donation and we're getting more and more comfortable with it. But a lot of people aren't quite sure where tissue donation comes in and how that comes to play. So can you please mm -hmm. break that down for us? Yeah, sure. And I think the, the biggest problem is that we all think of organ donation as something that would hopefully never happen to yeah. me. <laughs> you know, uh, because the circumstances in organ donation has to be perfectly right mm. for organs to be able to be donated. The patient has to be admitted to hospital, has to have suffered a major brain, in, uh, brain injury mm. that causes brain death. And in such a case, organs can be procured. Mm. But most of us don't come to our end in those circumstances. People die at home, at work, Absolutely. Um, you know, at school, on the road. Mm and then organs are not a possibility. And that is the point where tissue donation becomes so important because everyone can be a tissue donor. Yeah. So uh, what organs do constitute as tissue? And, yes. and, and how do we know that this is good? Is it bone marrow, skin? I, how does it come to play? Yes. So there's basically four tissues that we can donate as deceased people. Okay. So um, it's firstly corneas, then skin, bone, and heart valves. So those are the four tissues um, that we can donate and all of them are equally important, very much needed. We have such shortages on corneas. Mm. In South Africa, we need about 2,000 corneas a year. Um, but last year in this country, we only transplanted 134 local corneas. You so know, S Sandra, you do need. say that 2,000 is a large number, but considering how many South Africans there are, that really isn't a large stretch. Mm. It's not a lot of people. It doesn't sound like a lot, but those are the ones that we know of that might be on a list. If we start to include those people that are maybe in rural circumstances that don't even make it to a transplant list or a waiting list, um, there would be many, many more. So yes, we realize that in uh, if you compare the total health mm. problems that our country are facing, you know, if you think of things like HIV, cancer, malaria, all of that, transplant and tissue transplant seem so insignificant. But the reality is it is insignificant only when it doesn't affect us. Wow. As soon as it happens to me and I have a need, then it becomes important. Then all the alarm bells start to ring. Exactly. And you mentioned that this is what a deceased donor can give. Can we mm. donate as an alive donor? So the only thing that we can really look at as a, a living person to donate is bone. Okay. Um, I'm not talking organs now, just tissue. Um, with bone, you can, or many older people, go in for a hip replacement you know most of our grannies and aunts have had its hip replacement so the the ball of the femur can be donated um, when the surgeon inserts a, a very fancy prosthetic device mm. and that bone can also be used um, by the tissue bank they rework it and then make it available again in a different form mm. for a per person to be donated but things uh, like skin corneas, mm. heart valves, those things can, can not be donated by living people. And then taking the, this a step further, we did mention at the top of the show that unfortunately South Africa is in dire need and there is just nothing in the bank. The bank is mm. empty, looking like my bank account. Uh, but on a very, very serious note, what are the implications for patients if there is nothing to donate? Yeah, so in, with skin in particular, skin is the one tissue that is literally life-saving. Mm. Um, and the reason for that is when a patient burns, and, and we talk about serious burns, 40%, mm. 60% of, of the body surface, then that patient is subject to infection and dehydration and they go downhill so quickly and it often results in death unless we can intervene. So there are some synthetic 
products that can be used to cover the, the, the uh, injury temporarily, yes. but nothing works as well as human skin. Mm. So when the body burns, of course, the surface of the skin is gone and the body goes in total shock and all the cells are going into a panic, if you mm. want to call it that, running around, what do we do, what do we do? The skin is gone, we are now going to die, we now have to fight infection and so on. Yes. And what happens as soon as donor skin is applied to that injury, mm. the body calms down, the cells are all saying, all right, we can calm down, the skin has returned, mm. we can now do what we're supposed to do. And what we're supposed to do is to multiply and grow and heal ourselves. And that's what happens um, with a burn victim. As soon as human skin dressing is put on, wow. the body starts healing from underneath. And, and we get wonderful results yeah. in that way, rather than with um, synthetic products. And, and the reason is simply, when we have a synthetic product, every day or every second day, that bandage has to be removed, oh, wow. cleaned and reapplied. So every time the doctor does that, you subject the patient to more pain. More infe uh, possible infection. Possible infections. Possible infection. Mm. And every time you remove some of the new growth again, you know, so it's, it's a long process. Whereas with human skin, they can put it on one time and it can stay there for up to 14 days. Wow. Really giving the body enough time to start healing from underneath. And rejuvenate itself. Exactly that. But Sandra, we know that with organ donations, there's certain criteria, you know, that, that, that we look at. You can't just give heart, for example, a heart to anyone. You have to have the same weight, the same height as the person who donated it. Mm. Does the same apply with tissue? Mm. Not at all. With all of the tissue, there's no tissue typing needed. We don't even have to be the same blood group as wow. the donor. So anybody can donate to any person. Mm. Any colour person can donate to any colour, including skin. Um, and so there are, of course, a few things that make a person less suitable to be a donor. Mm. Um, but in general terms, we say anybody can donate mm. because, you know, so many things can happen to us in the course of our lifetime. Of course. So at the time of death is when we determine whether a person is suitable or not. Mm. Um, but yes, things like serious transmittable disease does make a difference. Um, in some cases, cancer makes a difference. Mm. But on the whole, we say anybody can donate tissue. It's open door policy. Everyone Absolutely. is invited. Everyone's welcome. Lastly, Sandra, this just comes top of mind to me. If I donate tissue, whether it is skin or whatever it is, I do not want to traumatize my family at my funeral. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that you can't have an open casket funeral, you can't have that last goodbye, and ultimately, this isn't the person that you lived with. How does that come to play? Mm, so that is one of the biggest myths that we have to try and clarify, okay. is that with organ and tissue donation, it is done in a very respectful way mm. so that it is exactly possible to do a viewing at the time of the funeral. So we never work on the face of the donor and wherever tissue is removed, prosthesis is used in that place. It's neatly closed up again. The funeral home dresses and prepares a person um, for the service. Mm -hmm. And it's possible to have an open casket or a viewing. Um, none of that has to change. And whether you choose to be buried or cremated, that has no bearing on, on whether you can be a donor or not. Oh, the sky is the limit here, and we yeah. definitely want people to go out. We encourage our viewers to get stuck in, of course, and help those. Thank you so much for shedding some light and debunking some myths that definitely, definitely do plague our minds regarding tissue and organ donation. Thank you. Thank you.